the, one of the other pieces of this that uh, we're seeing other companies do, so Twitter, for example, now is doing this thing where like, if you're going to send some, you know, crazy tweet that they detect, whether it's through language or, or kind of intention, they will basically put an interstitial that says, hey, like, hey, are you sure you want to send this? Like, you know, basically be nice to people. Uh, and it just, yeah. again, you can click through and send it, but it just makes people stop and think for a second. Uh, I almost wonder if Apple could get to the place where it doesn't have to like proactively tell me what to put on my calendar, but if it knows that I'm about to schedule the you know ninth meeting for the day and there's no workout planned on the calendar, it says like, are you sure you want to schedule this on days where you don't work out and you have, you know, more than X number of hours or meetings, then uh, you feel like shit and don't sleep well, you know, maybe you want to switch this meeting out for a workout like that type yep. of um, again, it's somewhat predictive, but also somewhat like the experience, uh, the user mm -hmm. experience that feels like that is a uh, inflection point on the individual's life. It may not create, you know, billions of dollars of market cap for Apple in the short term, but it just feels like that would uh, change my relationship with Apple and, and, and further deepen it because I just can't get that anywhere else. Yeah. And it, this, this is, goes into like another broader thing that I've been, I've been thinking about, but like when you start going into these softer things, like, should you work or should you relax? Should you see your family? Should you go to sleep? Should you work out? There is like the health component of that, but there's also like a value system component of like, what should Apple be telling you to do? What should Twitter be telling you to say? And I think this is where you get into the, this is partially where my thinking had gone after the Apple stuff, but like, what gets what happens when you start having these companies that look like countries in terms of you're choosing to be a part of them for your lifetime um, and and how are if you're opting into their value system and Apple chooses to prefer that you should be spending more time with family than than working that's a value system choice more than than anything else and I think we start ending up in a really really interesting and weird place um, I forget who wrote the piece but someone came out with something I think it was an like Ford policy review about about, it was really focused on Zoom, but the idea that when you have companies that operate uh, internationally and, and across, especially like China and the US, they're essentially one company that has to deal with two value systems. And that expression of the two value systems is oftentimes in massive conflict. I don't know where it goes, but like Apple's going to have to, if they're gonna play this game, they're gonna have to choose and codify their value system. They're essentially gonna have to have a constitution for what it means to be a citizen of Apple. Is a citizen of Apple someone who only maximizes GDP? Are they purely like a Protestant type person? Is it someone that is purely focused like a Sweden on, on happiness or something like that? Those are, these are like, these are more value choices. And that's where you see like, oh my gosh, like these companies, like, like I guess we'll stick with Apple, but like Apple, I think did $260 billion in revenue. I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure if you look at like the OECD countries, the only ones like above, I think Sweden is just on the barrier, honestly, of like, they did $260 billion in tax revenue last year. And like, that, that is the scale at which Apple is operating. And so you're just starting to like blur the line of what is possible, what goods should they be providing, what value should they be pushing? Um, and which of these are you gonna opt into as an individual? Because it really is a lifetime decision. What is your biggest, uh, what seems like the least obvious thing that Apple will do uh, but you believe they will in the next 10 years. But like, what's that one thing where you're like, people aren't thinking about this enough, but you think it's a foregone conclusion? Um, I think, I think it's a, a foregone conclusion. I mean, man, I, I guess like, I mean, it, it, it's honestly the, the health thing. I think it's a foregone conclusion that your primary care provider will be Apple at some point in the future. I think like pre COVID, there was a, a big narrative that I think people have forgotten about where Apple was moving their stores from stores to town squares. Like, like they were literally calling that like if this is a, this is like apple's colonialism of like the u.s like every city is going to have like an apple town square and if you're telling me what do you put in a town square you have a store for buying the things you also have a place for getting the health things and you have a place for educating yourself like this was their whole narrative i think a year ago in their like big announcements was like we are manifesting google in the physical world beyond just a transactional place we're a place where you get educated we're a place where you get the things you need and if I think about the stuff that government provides in a system like that or a country, it's, 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 it's education, healthcare, and then protection. And I think they are clearly doing education and providing the products. I think healthcare is next. And the question is like, do they actually get into the, the game of violence? Like, do you protect these values that you created? That's the ultimate government move.